Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight for this live event, Funding Our Future, Seattle Public Schools Budget Information Session. We will be starting shortly. We are joined by our ASL and our language interpreters for our top languages. This evening, we are offering Cantonese, Somali, Spanish, and Vietnamese translation services. We have experienced a technical difficulty in our Amharic room, and we won't be able to offer that particular service this evening. We certainly do apologize for that. Our ASL interpreter will be visible in our main room. Our families who prefer to join one of our language channels will be able to do so in just one moment. There are a few times during the presentation when our English speaking audience will notice that our panel is pausing. This is to provide time, the time needed to share the information with our multilingual families. At this time, I'm going to call on each interpreter who will be able to provide instructions to our families in order to, so that they can switch languages and go into their language room. Miguel. Mahmoud. Laney. and Michael. Thank you once again for joining us this evening for our budget information session. Again, our title is Funding Our Future, and that is our budget information session for Seattle Public Schools. Thank you again for joining us today. Before we begin, Seattle Public Schools acknowledges that we are on the ancestral lands and traditional territories of the Puget Sound Coast Salish people. It is also a particular note that we acknowledge the souls and lives of black and brown people who have contributed to the founding, wealth, and development of our country. These acknowledgements are just the start and not a replacement for authentic relationships and engagement with our diverse voices in our beloved community. Thank you, thank you for constantly challenging our status quo and pushing back so that each of us can be better. Seattle Public Schools is committed to dismantling systemic racism and discrimination in spaces of our work, particularly for those who are furthest away from educational justice. I invite you to continue to work with us to create change, and that includes this evening. With that, I am Bev Redmond, Interim Chief of Staff and Assistant Superintendent of Public Affairs. Joining me this evening, to my right, is Superintendent Dr. Brent Jones, and to my left, Consi Pedroza, Assist Associate Superintendent, and Fred Podesta, Interim Deputy Superintendent and Assistant Superintendent of Operations. Most certainly this evening, you will have some questions. If you look toward the bottom of your screen, you can find a Q&A button that will allow you to enter some of your frequently asked questions or concerns. 
That particular area is going to be moderated by our staff tonight, and they will be answering questions in real time as much as possible. In this session tonight, we will be sharing some information regarding our district-wide budget and also our planning strategies. However, what we won't be able to do is answer specific school-based questions or staffing questions. However, we do want you to get an answer to those. And we have set up a Let's Talk form that you can access to submit those. And we promise we will make sure that we call you or connect with you via email so that you know your question has been answered. Even after tonight's session, we want you to be able to ask questions or to review the frequently asked questions. When the, tonight ends, we ask you to head to our, our website, seattleschools.org slash budget to gather more information. Again, you'll find frequently asked questions there and you're able to submit your own questions as well as see a recording of tonight's presentation. As you look at our agenda on the screen, we will begin the session with a word from our superintendent regarding funding our future. He will make the case for why, why we are here and what we're going to do about it. Then we will go into a fiscal update as well as explore some enrollment trends. We'll take a brief break to allow our interpreters to reset, and then I'll come back and talk about some community engagement strategies for future change. We'll also discuss well-resourced schools as a concept and answer some questions. With that, I would like to introduce our superintendent, Dr. Brent Jones. He's not only our superintendent, he's an alum of our district as well as a parent, Dr. Jones. Thank you, Beth. Funding our future. Good evening, everyone. I'm glad you've taken the time to join us for this important conversation. Today, we will be introducing you to some of the issues and opportunities that we are facing. As many of you are aware, our district, like other school districts, is facing a challenge over the next several years with declining enrollment. Our student enrollment has been dropping since 2017 and we anticipate this trend will continue for the near future. At the same time, we know that our state does not fully fund or cover the cost of public education. I know these are challenging topics, so I wanna be sure we are addressing your concerns as we move forward. Funding our future means we are using a balanced and equitable process. We want our schools to offer high quality instruction and support for student success. Our budget for next year will enable us to maximize our resources and programs for students, and it will keep our district solvent. We have already made some hard choices. We are identifying reductions in the central office. We have outlined school-based reductions. And this month, our schools are in the process of developing their budgets for next year. Shifts in enrollment occur annually. In general, enrollment changes mean some schools will see staff changes. We know this is disruptive when shifts occur. Our goal is to minimize these disruptions. The combinations of cuts and funding requests to the state will help us balance our budget for 23-24. Looking ahead, we have an opportunity to create a multi-year plan to fund our future through this process, we will take every opportunity to streamline, improve, and develop a system of ideal, well-resourced schools. We are about to give you a lot of information. It may be a lot to take in in this short amount of time, but please stick with us. Our team is here to help guide you through it. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jones, for opening the session this evening. And to take us just a little bit further into our session, we're asking Fred Podesta to give us our financial update and help us understand some enrollment trends. Fred? Thank you, Bev. This slide outlines the district's planned general fund expenditures for the coming school year. 
The general fund is used for the day-to-day -day operations of the district. Things such as most employees' salary and benefits and other expenses such as utilities and supplies are paid for with the general fund. The other major fund in the district's budget is the capital fund. The capital fund is used to construct and maintain buildings and purchase furniture, technology, and other major equipment. Most of this fund comes from local property tax levies. Because this fund must be used to build or maintain capital assets, it can't be used for our operating expenses. The current general fund budget is $1.14 billion. The general fund comes from several sources, state funding, federal funding, and an operating property tax levy approved by local voters. For many general fund sources, the amount a school district receives is based on the number of students enrolled and the number of those students who qualify for free and reduced lunch and the programs and services offered by the district. As you can see, Seattle Public Schools expenses are approximately 6% of the general fund is spent on administration in the central office. Looking for efficiencies in our central office is an area of focus as the district develops strategies to fund its future. For the 23-24 school year, we are facing a $131 million budget shortfall. In other words, if we make no changes, next year we will spend $131 million more than the funds we receive from the state and other funding sources. This means we need to make changes. We need to reduce our spending, we need to identify new revenues, and we need to make use of district reserves. Because our priority is to preserve resources in schools, the central office has been a key focus area for spending reductions. The central administration has a planned $33 million reduction for the 23-24 school year. Our proposed budget plan calls for reducing central staff positions by almost 11 percent. We've worked hard to minimize staff impacts by looking for alternatives. This includes a hiring freeze, and shifting payroll costs to other funding sources when that is appropriate. For school-based budgets, we did identify some systemic changes to how we allocate school resources. This change will provide plan savings of approximately $11 million. The balance of the shortfall will be resolved with potential increased state funding pending from the current legislative session and the use of district reserves, which means using our economic stabilization fund, sometimes referred to as a rainy day fund, unspent funds from prior years, and other sources where appropriate. Now let's walk through the timeline for writing the district's budget. In January and February, central office departments worked very hard to identify the $33 million in budget adjustments I just described. Now in March, schools are working on creating their budgets for the next year. As those budgets are developed, they will include the $11 million in reduction, systemic reductions that I described earlier. Shifts in enrollment occur annually. Enrollment changes at specific schools mean there might be some staffing changes for the next year. We understand these annual staffing adjustments can be disruptive and we work to mitigate those impacts as best we can. The proposed budget for the 23-24 school year will be presented to the school board in June. The board will vote on the budget in July, and the district is legally required to submit its budget to the state in August. While we're making good progress on next year's budget, the district's general fund shortfall is structural. It's not a one-time problem. This ongoing deficit is caused by a variety of factors including declining enrollment due to changes in demographics leading to fewer school-aged children in Seattle, increased student needs, and increased labor costs and rising costs of goods and contracted services, as well as gaps in state funding. As we develop a multi-year budget plan, our objectives will be to preserve resources in school, identify programmatic efficiencies and reductions in the central office and across the system, 
identify areas where state assistance is needed. As we pursue these objectives, we will work to increase enrollment while adjusting to demographic realities. Ultimately, we will support a sustainable system of well-resourced schools. The district is taking a holistic approach to resolving this issue. We will be facing tough choices. The goal is to balance our revenue and spending to ensure future sustainability. We must operate as a more efficient organization that is scaled appropriately to student enrollment. Let's look at a couple of these topics. As I mentioned earlier, there are gaps in state funding for which we continue to seek more assistance. This slide highlights three areas where the district's expenditures exceed state funding. While these are not our only budget challenges, it's worth noting that the total gap identified here is more than our overall general fund deficit. As we look to fund the district's future, we will continue to focus on these and other areas that have the most severe gaps. We will work with the legislature, the governor, and the office of the superintendent of public instruction to advocate for sufficient funding. At the same time, we will continue to review and refine our internal operations to identify ways we can become more efficient and reduce costs. As we've described, student enrollment is an important element of this discussion. It determines how funding is allocated, but more importantly, planning for enrollment helps us to use resources wisely. Here's this history of enrollment at our district since the 17-18 school year and the current year projection. The single yellow line on the left side of the chart shows that enrollment has declined since 2017, as had been forecast. The three lines on the right show a range of forecasted enrollment projections over the next decade. The low forecast is in red, the medium forecast is in yellow, and the high forecast is in blue. As we plan to fund our future, we will continue to focus and keep a close eye on enrollment, and we will plan and budget and adjust our operations accordingly. Thank you, and I will turn it back to Bev. Thank you, Fred. Appreciate that information. And before we take a little bit of a break to allow our interpreters to reset, I do want to give an overview of our community engagement plans that we have coming up. I want to start by saying for next school year, for 23-24, decisions have already been made and our first tier engagement is already in process. You've heard Dr. Jones and Fred give us a little bit of an overview of that. But I do want to take a moment to share with everyone that there are no, no school site consolidations or closures planned for the 23-24 school year. Instead, we are going to be using the next school year to engage with our school community in conversations around our educational values and vision. We want to work with you our families and our residents to establish a shared vision for well-resourced schools. So what will engagement look like for 24-25? Specific school changes for future school years will be based in community engagement. Those changes will be developed and we will gather feedback from you to shape a draft for our recommendations and potential alternatives. This type of engagement will be two-way. It may include such things like focus groups, surveys, and interviews, but it will always include a feedback loop on how your input helped to influence our decisions. Again, I want to go back and say for next school year, for 23-24, there are no school site consolidations or closures planned. We will begin in the fall with community engagement to determine how we will make those changes. At this moment, I want to give our interpreters a chance to reset and our panel to get ready for 
well-resourced schools, as well as to answer your questions. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Let's take a three-minute break. Thank you. And welcome back. Thank you for being patient during our break, allowing our interpreters to reset and our panelists to refresh. Thus far, you have joined us for Funding Our Future, Seattle Public Schools budget information session. We've already heard from our superintendent making the case for why for funding our schools. We've also heard a little bit about our fiscal situation and our enrollment trends. You've also heard from me regarding our community engagement plan. And again, a reminder that there are no school closures or consolidations planned for next school year. We wanna have that conversation with you regarding well-resourced schools. And that is a new concept that many of you may not be used to. So to help us understand that a little bit more and why our students need well-resourced schools, Dr. Consi Pedroza is here with us. Consi. Thank you, Bev. Seattle Public Schools wants our schools to be well resourced so that they can offer a full range of curriculum and student support. We know students need to thrive and be successful in their education. It is premature to provide specifics on specific school changes based on enrollment. Ultimately, those decisions will come before the school board. Well resourced schools a well-resourced school has sufficient resources and enrollment to meet the needs of all of its students. This can include things like well-equipped classrooms, up-to-date te up technology, 
a variety of instructional materials, and sufficient number of qualified educators and support staff. Additionally, a well-resourced school may also have access to resources such as libraries, science labs, and athletic facilities. It includes resources to ensure that the school can maintain and upgrade these resources over time. These are preliminary attributes of a well-resourced school. These are some examples that we have combed through research and it's, we are putting this in front of the community to really engage with the community and really defining what a well-resourced school um, looks like for the future. Um, so some examples, Seattle Public Schools will center decisions that ensure that we maintain the following attributes in our schools. High quality instructors from pre-kindergarten to graduation, safety and security in all our buildings and classrooms, a welcoming environment where every student is affirmed, social emotional learning and supports to support wellness, services to support unique learners. We centered many of these attributes and we know that the community, we will define more, but we're centering these on our student outcomes focused governance and the attributes that are a well-resourced school will continue to engage with our school leaders, our community, and our staff. Next, on to you, Beth. Thank you, Kansi. It is now time to get into some of your questions and your concerns. During this particular time, hopefully you have already placed your questions into the chat and our staff has been answering some of those throughout this time. Also, please remember that we will not get into specific building budget decisions or staffing position decisions at the building level. You can do that by, or address that question by putting it into our Let's Talk form. And again, someone will contact you via email, another form of communication to make sure that you know that your question has been received. With that, one of the very important questions that we have received is why now? Why is this happening? Why do we need to fund our schools for the future? And I'm going to toss that question to Dr. Jones. The question is why now? Um, actually, we've had a, a gap in funding for several years. Uh, this, last, this last year, uh, as prior years, we've been able to plug those gaps with one-time funds. For example, we had ESSER funds, and those are federal funds that we were, we were able to receive to close the gap in funding during the COVID years. We've also had funding from the state that held us harmless uh, for our enrollment shortfalls. We've also had other types of support from the state. But the bottom line is our expenditures outweigh our revenue. And in school funding, revenue are, is enrollment. And as you heard uh, Fred Podesta talk about, our enrollment is declining, and it's been declining since 2017. And so what we've been trying to do is just hold the, hold the line, if you will, on making sure that we could submit a balanced budget. But this year, unlike previous years, again, we haven't had the opportunity to have funds from federal sources uh, state sources. So going into the 23-24 budget year, we're having to make adjustments and reductions. So this is the year, unfortunately, that we have to start uh, an aggressive uh, and, and concerted effort, being very intentional about doing what we must to submit a balanced budget. Thank you, Dr. Jones. We appreciate that answer. And hopefully you found that information useful on why now, why do we need to address our financial needs? As many parents have submitted questions, there is one that is continuously popular and that is, will my student's teacher lose their job? Kansi, would you help us with that particular answer? Thank you. Um, if there is a reduction in force, it would be limited, especially in our schools. Every year the district has an average of 400 educators that leave the district. We anticipate that most teachers, instructional assistants, and school staff will find jobs within Seattle Public Schools through our displacement process, which is part of our agreement with our union partners. Our goal is to ensure that every student has a qualified teacher at the start of the school year. Keeping our staff in our district is our priority. Thank you, Kansi. Appreciate that answer as well. On to our next question. 
why are you building new schools or expanding schools if you have too much classroom space? Mm -hmm. That is a very valid question, but there is a very specific answer to that. Fred Podesta, would you help us out? Sure. Schools that are currently under construction or beginning construction this summer are funded by the Building Excellence Cap 5 Capital Levy, which was approved by the voters in 2019. These new schools will replace existing buildings that are in poor condition. Modernization of the existing building would not have been cost effective and would not have resulted in the high quality, modern learning space that we know our students need. We follow educational specifications that set the best possible standards for our school buildings, including an efficient school size, which will result in a school that accommodates future growth, provides flexibility for the changing program needs and demographics over time. These buildings will provide students with a safe and positive learning environment. We need to balance planning for the potential future regional and city growth with historical trends. The city is expected to continue to grow, so we take that into account and we make long-term plans and invest in our buildings. And though, although enrollment has decreased over the last few years, we need to take the long view and prepare for long-term growth in, in Seattle. Great. Thank you, Fred. Another question that has come up, and I'm going to ask for our community engagement slide to come back for this one, and is I want to know how you're going to speak with or talk to families about school closures. Earlier in the presentation, you heard me speak a little bit about our community engagement process. And just to reiterate, specific school changes for future years will happen based on community engagement. We are currently creating an engagement plan, which will begin this fall. During the engagement process, we're going to gather feedback from you to help shape drafts and also discover potential alternatives. So we want to be listening to you. The types of engagement that we will use include focus groups, surveys, or interviews. Many of those um, methods are very famili familiar to many of you. But overall, we want to say that when the decisions are made, we want to be able to share with you how community engagement helped influence those decisions. So please be looking for those particular plans. They will be coming shortly, soon. We're working on that and we will get you updated as soon as we possibly can. Superintendent Jones, this next question is probably for those that are looking toward the future and may feel a little bit of anxiety. When will the district announce? Now, we've already said that we are not going to make any closures or consolidations for 23-24, but for many people, they're looking ahead to 24-25. Can you tell us a little bit more about when the district will make any kind of announcements? Yes, yeah, so uh, I thank you for that question. And one of the things I wanna lead with is we're focusing on what our schools should be looking like in the future. So when we talk about well-resourced schools, we wanna know what that is first. So are any changes that we make, consolidations, closure, really have to be in line with what we develop with community around this concept of well-resourced schools. So until we get that really solid, until we get an, a direction uh, from community uh, and all forms of the community from our board, to, to families, to students, uh, and, and, our, and our wonderful uh, teaching staff and principals, we won't even have a model yet for what those closures and consolidations look like. Mm -hmm. So we don't have specifics right now on purpose. We wanna make sure that we have the opportunity to talk to our families and to talk to our community around this concept of a well-resourced school. You heard Dr. Pedrosa talk about the concept we're gonna develop that in the next uh, several months and over the, probably over the next year, continue to refine a well-resourced school. And so that's what we wanna make sure our families and again, our community gives us that guidance around what they expect to, for their students' experience. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate that particular answer. And just reiterating and reassuring our families that their engagement, their opinions, their thoughts, their input is going to be invaluable in the coming months. Indeed. We have already started planning for next year. How were those cuts, how are reduction decisions being made even before we get into that community engagement process for 24-25? How do we go about making cuts decisions for next year? Fred? As the district looks for ways to reduce costs, the primary guiding principle is to preserve resources in schools and minimize negative impacts to students, particularly those students furthest from educational justice. Adhering to this principle is why we focused on central admi administration as we look for efficiencies and reductions. Even though that only represents 6% of the general fund, the bulk of the savings we're looking for in the 23-24 school year is coming from central administration. Thank you, Fred. Appreciate that answer again. Now, we haven't been sitting still <laughs> regarding our financial picture. We have been looking at all available options to us, and that includes advocating at the state level for funding. Dr. Jones, would you give us some insight on what has been happening at the state level? Yes, we've been uh, borderline aggressive in going to the uh, Olympia, literally showing up in Olympia, lobbying, advocating for the critical resources. We're really looking at areas of special education services, transportation, multilingual, multilingual services as well. And those are areas where we have our biggest gaps. Our legislative delegation, senators and representatives are very well aware of what our needs are and they're working constructively with us to try to close those gaps. We know that there's, there are a lot of uh, priorities in Olympia this, this session, but we have been present and we've been really trying to uh, educate and give the uh, clarity around what the challenges are for us as we move forward. And so I, I just want to salute our legislators for the work that they're doing right now. We know that they have a, a very tough job, but we've been in there uh, scrapping and fighting for the resources that we need for our students here and families in Seattle Public Schools. And we also want to invite our community to take a look at our government relations page on our district website. It has our legislative agenda for this particular session. We discussed a few slides back in our enrollment slides, and we don't have to go there at this particular point for a visual, but we did talk about declining enrollment. Is there a reason why? Why are Seattle Public Schools enrollment numbers dropping? Fred, if you could give us a little insight, we'd appreciate it. Sure. Shifts in enrollment occur annually. These are shifts from building to building or shifts in enrollment from one grade band to another. For the past several years in Seattle, we've observed a trend where even as the city population grows, the growth of households with school-aged children is not keeping up with the overall growth in population. There are probably a variety of reasons for this, but some of the factors appear to be the availability of family housing, housing prices, and lower birth rates. We will continue to look at these trends and continue to try to forecast enrollment, which frankly has become a bit more complicated after the COVID pandemic, which has changed residential patterns in our city. We don't know how, how long those, term, those trends will persist, but we know that, again, like many school districts across the state and across the country, public school enrollments are dropping and we need to adjust accordingly. Thank you, Fred, and also want to thank our entire panel for being here this evening to answer some of the questions that have come from the chat and hopefully also that our staff is in the chat area, the Q&A area, also continuing to answer questions as they come in. Before we wrap, Dr. Jones, is there a particular word that you would have for our community? A little bit of hope, sir, on how we are balancing and how we are making decisions in the best interest of our community. Yeah, I, I would hope that the community is comforted in knowing we are making sure that we have a North Star. Our North Star really focusing on our goals, focusing on our strategic plan, and we're gonna balance that with that concept that we talked about around well-resourced schools. 
we're not just balancing a budget for the sake of being compliant with what we have to do on an annual basis. We are actually taking advantage of this opportunity to go forward and to think differently about how we can continue to be a fantastic school district. If I, I talk to parents a lot, I talk to families a lot and students as well. Most of our students are very pleased with the services that they're getting from our, from our fantastic teachers and school leaders. We have a, a, a dynamic district and I think our folks need to understand that. We are gonna actually have an enrollment campaign because I think we haven't really been telling our story around Seattle Public Schools. So I think Seattle Public Schools, by any measure, uh, quantitative or qualitatively, stacks up against all the school districts in the state. And we are a national leader, believe it or not. So I think our parents and families, and anybody who's watching here today, you should have confidence in Seattle Public Schools. I'm, I'm happy to be here serving you and know that we are entrusted with your, your students and we're doing a, a pretty good job. But we give us grace because we're gonna make sure that we get this budget right so that we can fund our future. Thank you so much. Absolutely, we want to make sure that Seattle Public Schools is strong for generations to come. Just as Dr. Jones has benefited from it as an alumni, we want countless others, our students, to be able to do the same. Thank you very much for being here. We appreciate your time, your attention, and your questions. Please remember that if you have a question, you can head to our website at any point in time, seattleschools.org slash budget, and submit your question there. And what we're going to do tonight for the balance of the time, while we come off of camera and off of mic, we're gonna keep that Q&A section open with our staff so that they can continue to answer questions up to the crossing of the hour at 7 p.m. Thank you so much. On behalf of Seattle Public Schools, please be well. Thank you. Thank you.